there? Yes. Okay. All right. Hey, this is Sean. Uh, I started calling myself Club Fed Sean because there's R Dap Dan. I need a name, but uh. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I got a special guest today, guys. This is Larry. He's out of Las Vegas. Just called me. He's been watching my channel. He got sent to 18 months. He's going to Mendota Camp. It's in uh, it's near Fresno. It's in the middle of California, where it's like 115 degrees in the summer, Larry. And anyways, Larry. He's gonna come on here. He's gonna tell you his story, what he went through, what he's looking, you know, looking to go through. And uh, hopefully, Larry, you can help out the guy behind you that watches these videos. And you know what I mean. Right. Uh, we try to carry this, uh, play this thing forward. So go ahead, Larry. You know. Uh. Um. How y'all doing? Uh. My name's Larry, of course. Uh. And I was sentenced to eighteen months. Uh. But let's go. Like I got indicted. I didn't know that I was indicted. You know, everything like through this process has been like a magical mystery. So uh, another guy that's in my case, he got pulled over for a regular traffic ticket. You know, so he called me. And he's like, hey, I've been in jail all weekend. And he in another state, like he's in another state. He called me. He like, hey, we indicted. I'm like, what do you mean we indicted? Me, you and our other friend, you indicted. So then that's when the panic come in. It's like, the, the, you know, you're looking out the window. You don't know what's going on. So then. It's funny, like, in, indictment, man. You know, explain indictment to people. Because when I first heard the word about indicted, yeah, they had a trial and you weren't there. It's the grand jury. And, you know. <laughs> basically, basically, what happened is they investigate you. They take the evidence to a grand jury. And the grand jury confirms that you should be charged with X, Y, Z. And right? you don't and you don't get invited to see this grand jury, do you? We don't no. know who they are. Jury of your peers. What? <laughs> you, don't, you don't know anything. No one has contacted you. You have not been questioned anything, but now you are indicted. Yeah. Yeah. So after you indicted, you go through the whole process of trying to figure out, you know, and this this is for someone that, you know, doesn't have access to a channel like this. So you sit at home, you know, naturally the first thing you're going to do is like, okay, I'm about to lawyer up, but then you're going to find out that getting a federal lawyer costs $25,000. Oh yeah. They're not cheap. And, uh, I don't know about you, Sean, but I advise against that because if they <laughs> indict you, you're going to jail. I do too. The fed, the ones that they appoint you work just as hard. In, in the feds, in the feds, not in the states, but in the feds. In the feds. So when my experience is when they indict you, you're going to jail. I can't tell you how long you're going, but if they indict you, you're going to jail. So my philosophy was is if I'm not going to trial and I'm already going to jail, why am I going to spend $25,000 that can be for my wife and kids? when the result is going to be the end of you taking a plea. So going through this process and everything matters you do from the point of turning yourself in. Like, did you take a plea fast enough or not? Yeah. That is going to be discussed at sentencing. Like, did he give you any, like, immediately? So um, what kind of worked out for me was, was that, um, when I turned myself in, um, they appointed me a lawyer and the lawyer talked to me and he was like, I hadn't said anything. Like, what do you think? Like, you know more than I do. He just bred what was on the surface. And I was like, well, basically this was white collar case. It wouldn't be that difficult if they look to see that I did X, Y, Z. So I don't know. Like he said, well, do you want to, you know, like I can't really go into that part, but do you want to, gotcha. basically, do you want to, uh, do you want a meeting? You know what I mean? Let me just say, right. let me say meeting. So I don't know. Like my advice is to uh, plea as fast as you can. You're not going to get out of it. Uh, yeah, you're not, you're not going to win. And, and if, you, if you do win, they're, they're coming back next year with more charges. It, they, it, they, they don't quit. They don't quit. No, no, they don't. So uh, my advice would be to uh, take the plea. And that's when it, I, I'm not going to say that's when the games begin, but the process begins 
at that point. You yeah, they know, call so, that a, a downward departure, right? You probably heard that term. Right. Yeah. No, I, that, I don't think that I'm, I'm talking about after you take a plea. Let's just say, okay, I did this shit. Tell them, you know, excuse my yeah. language. I want to. No, it's okay, man. You can swear on this channel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, I want to take a plea. Nothing is going to move fast, even when you say that. Like, okay, you want to take a plea. That's yeah, cool. yeah. That's, so and, that's months away. Yeah, that, right. That's, that's they drag. Away. They drag it on, don't they? They drag it on, man. Drag it on, and in the process, you got to deal with pretrial. That means you got to be calling a telephone number two times a month. You're going to have to report, and you might be on drug testing. So. Um, you're going, your life is going to be actively disrupted and you yeah. still don't have answers. You don't know what's going on. And then, um, these magical court dates. And then after you yeah, preliminary take, hearing, and a, uh, you know, and a bond hearing and, a, and you have two judges, right? You got the bond majesty or they're called majesty, but you got your bond judge and then you got your sentencing judge and you're going right. to see each one at different times, you know, they're. The bond judge is the one that keeps track on your pretrial. How you been? Have you violated? Did you come up dirty? Shall I keep you out? You know, and right. then you got the sentencing judge, you know, which right. you probably don't see the sentencing judge that much, but those, those right. court, yeah. Does that sound kind of what happened to you? That's exactly what happened. And then on top of that, um, you don't understand this stuff. You don't understand the sentencing guideline tables, levels, and all of that stuff. Oh yeah, so, that's, yeah, that, that's that's a, that's yeah, all confusing. Guidelines, category one, two, three, four, criminal history, offense level this, uh, you know, custody level that. Might go into a camp, penitentiary, probation. All your friends and family say, man, they're not gonna do none. It's been two years. You're on pretrial. You're gonna get probation. They, they don't, man. They don't let you. They don't let you walk around. If they're going to send you to prison, you wouldn't be out like this, right? How many times have you heard that? Man, listen, man. <laughs> you have no uncertainty. You can look at that chart, look at that board, talk to your lawyer all you want. Uh, you just, it's no certainty, you know? And then on top of that, now you've taken a plea. So you know you're going to get sentenced. And then yeah. in, your plea, in your plea, your lawyer is going to, talk to you about your sentencing level but then they're going to talk to you about pre-sentence report right yeah psr or psi it's called both but psr psi and it's going to be somebody that contact you and basically they're going to want to know your whole life story yeah everything even when you were a kid what schools you went to uh who you hung out with in elementary school i mean yeah. you, who you dated your wife if you cheated on her, stuff like that, all your personal stuff, man. All of your personal stuff. And then the most important part about the PSI report was if you've been in any kind of trouble, and I don't care what it was, it could have been anything. It counts against whatever agreement that you and your lawyer worked out with prosecutors. This PSI report, if you've been in trouble, it's going to show you that the things that you have in the past is going to raise your point level. Yes. Right? Yes. So, so let's just say you worked out a 15, you know, sentencing level schedule a with the prosecutor, but you got prior drug charges, fighting in the club, domestic, whatever it is. Now, when that report come back, they're gonna recommend an additional nine points. Yeah, they're gonna add. They're gonna add to it. They're gonna. Well, we didn't know you had this history. Yeah. Right. Right. So you looking at you know you could possibly be looking at eighteen months, but when that pre sentence report come back, regardless of any deal that you made with the prosecutor, this report comes back and say, you know what, let's turn that fifteen into a twenty four. You know, and that this is years off your life. You yeah. know, so things get pretty pretty things get pretty intense because they don't want to come off the pre-sentence report you know and, and then to me you still playing magical games because you don't know what you don't know when sentencing is you don't know if your lawyer going to be able to work out anything with this pre-sentence report you didn't know that the pre-sentence report could add points to your situation right so now, right 
Damn, you got to take it a done deal like you do in the states. In a state court, you know, you make they will a deal, and you, you know, right. You, you got sixteen months. That's what you're gonna do. The judge agrees. Everybody agrees. You know, not yeah. like that in the feds. Yes. Okay. So now, now you're like this. It's no certainty. Your wife, your job, your personal things. How long you gonna be gone? You know, you're a human, so you're gonna be optimistic. Like, yeah. You know, and then you know what I used to do? I used to go and put US Department of Justice and just pick states in different areas. And I try to find somebody like, hey, let me go and find somebody that has a case like mine. So you can get an idea of what you're looking at, right? Yeah. So you can get an idea. And then I used to reference that with my lawyer. Like, he got this. Why can't I get this? Right. (laughs) (laughs) What this guy got, you know? Um, then after that, um, you know, you pretty much, you, you, you know, your, your lawyer tell you, say, Hey, I worked it out on your PSI, but now you've learned how to fluently work PACER. So (laughs) he said he worked it out, but you don't see it in the PACER. I'm like, oh, you ain't work out nothing. I don't see nothing change, you know? (laughs) Yeah. But now, now, um, after that, they said a sentencing date so now you get into the point where it's sentencing memos so now the prosecutor has to send over what he thinks to the judge and then your lawyer is going to send over what he thinks to the judge and you don't know what's going to happen you don't your know PS- don't know your psi report is out there they're going to give you a report of what the prosecutor said, and they're going to give you a report of what the lawyer said, but you don't know. And this this is the most important part for me is that I learned. Um, you would think that a judge would not read these things, you know, because of your letters. When I, when I say sentencing memo, these are all of the letters and things that you've gotten from family and friends and lawyers and, ju- you know, prestigious people in your life your sure. community service, your community service, all of the things that you tried to do to show the judge before he sentenced you because you had X amount of time out to to do different things. Yeah, and the judge like, wants to see, is this guy going to change? What's he done on free trial? Because uh, if this guy's not going to change and hasn't learned his lesson, I'm going to give him the max. But if the guy and, shows me he's worth saving, I'm giving him time. But if you show me that there's some change in you, I don't have to get, I won't give you that much time. Right, when the I, judge makes that that call. When this, when when I listen, the judge read every letter. He was very he was very proficient in my life, like that PSR report. Yeah. That's right. You were going to tell me about how he he gave you the different the points for each letter. So, yeah, yeah, get into that. He read the letters like, and I think I had two doctors and a lawyer. Those were the main letters that. Um, he referred to, he was more interested in the things that I said in my personal letter about what I was going to do in the future. What, what was the steps I was going to take to give these people their money back? And every single thing mattered. You see what I'm saying? Like the yeah. letters mattered. The letters mattered. The, you know, because you, when you at home, you like, man, that judge probably going to throw this. He's not going to read this stuff. No, he's going to read it. He's going to know about you. He's going to know about your report. He's gonna he's gonna read your personal letter, and um, after you go through the process, I think it was a one through five step process that he went through at sentencing. So he's gonna talk about the case. He's gonna let the lawyer speak. He's gonna let the prosecutor speak. I think that's step one. Step two, he's gonna um, <clears throat> talk about uh, your letters and talk about your letters, and then um, step three, he's gonna let you speak. You know what I mean? Yes. And then step four and five, he's going to go back to the PSI report about your criminal past. You know, so, you know, any points, any major points will be adjusted right there. You right. know, because, right. because the prosecutor asks for something, the lawyer asks for something, and the PSI report asks for something. So that agreement that you made with that prosecutor is going to get it's going to get dealt with at this point right here. Right. Right. So he, so, so he's going to make that. And the last thing is 
is that he's going to let you speak at your citizen. And hey, let's talk about that. Do you remember? I, I always tell people to speak from the heart, look them in the eyes, yes. don't look down on the ground. And this is your chance to show the judge I, there's a real person right here, Your Honor. How, how did you right. do your, How did you talk to your judge? I don't care who you are at this very moment. You're going to be frightened. You can write everything that you want, but you're not going to read it. You're going to speak from the mind anyway, because after he goes to this step 1.4, I don't care who you are. You are going to have fear. Yes. You are going to have fear. I don't care how tough you are. <laughs> after they go through those one through four, you're going to have fear. So you don't have a choice but to speak from the heart because you're going to be like, you know what? All of a sudden, this just got really real. Yeah, because, you know, throughout the process, they wasn't talking about 18 months. They was talking about three thirty five. They was talking about some other months. And I'm <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. You know, I had to do this to Zoom. So I'm looking at my lawyer on the screen. I'm like, you ain't going to say nothing. You know, and I'm texting the whole time. I'm like this. I'm texting him like, hey, say something, do something, anything. But he just was like, just be patient. This is the process, you know, but when he sentenced me, um, I'm grateful. Um, I really am. Um, you know, I realized I did something I shouldn't have did. Um, I wasn't thinking about the consequences when I did it. You know, uh, no, we, ne we never do. We don't, we don't, we don't think all the family and friends and everybody else that affects in your life when you make that, 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 that choice, whatever crime you did, man, we don't think right. about it. I can tell you this. By the time I got to sentencing, I was ready to be sentenced. I was ready to be over with. Oh, like, I'm, I'm amen. Of, amen to you on that. It was such a relief to me. He could have gave me 10 years and I would have said, thank you. I mean, it's over. Right. Now I can, you know. <laughs> man, but then... It's still not over. It's still magical things, like you know no. what I mean? Like, yeah. Okay. Okay. I have just been told that I'm going to prison. And now, you know, you know, for your loved ones, like uh my my wife, she took it the pet first three days. She just was and that's when we found your channel. I was like, I have to figure out what I'm facing, not more so towards me, because I'ma find out anyway. I'm yeah. going, you know. Right. But for the people that's not going. It's, hey, come sit in here and watch this. Yeah, Let what's me. it really like? There's not a lot out there on the camps and the lows. Plenty you know, of stuff for a penitentiary. You know, that's scary, I, you know. About my it, channel, they was like, I hope they rape you. And I'm like, oh, God, <laughs> don't do that. You know what I mean? Dog? I hope this happened to you. I hope they shank you. And then yeah. I, but then when I got to watching your channel, and I got to watching our depth. Yeah. She was watching it. She, my wife, actually, I told you yesterday. I let you speak to her. She actually yeah. found the channel. She was like, "Look, RDAP on a hiatus. You need to go and watch this. He telling, he keeping it above, keeping it real." Thank so you. I was like, "Yeah, I was like, um, it just was a relief." So after this process, I now I, I'm going to prison, right? But you don't know where you're going to prison because. It's supposed to be a magical letter, a letter coming in the mail. Oh uh, yeah, that designation letter. Yeah, and sometimes it doesn't come till a week before you go in. Exactly. So now, you 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 don't know when you're going to jail. You don't know when this letter coming. So you're checking the mailbox every day. The whole house is checking the mailbox. Like, did you yeah. check the mail? Did you get the mail? Did you get the mail? Did you get the mail? And we recently, a couple of days ago, got the letter and um. We we researched the um and that's when I call you. We researched the the place and how many people was there and what it's like. And I was like, you know, I just kept watching more videos, but I was like, you know what? Let me call him. And then after I call, like, you know, we got at least we got a plan. I still don't know what I'm gonna tell my kids because I thought about telling them I'm going to the army. You know, yeah, what I mean? you're gonna go do service for your country or, or yeah. yeah, yeah, like that's the most difficult thing, like. You know, my uh seven and my five year old, they they you know, they 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 ain't gonna take it too well regardless wherever I'm going. But I've been trying to figure out but but see this place doesn't have bars. No fences, man, no fences. So I, I got to see Mendota on a I found some uh I went on some images and I saw that it's there's there's the you know, the medium or whatever, the low next to it, but 
it's its own little camp, and it's got no fences. It's got a baseball field and all that. I got to see. It's a small camp, but uh, it's it's yeah, it's you're there's no fences, nothing, man. You're gonna be just out in the country. You know what I mean? Uh, you won't feel like you're in prison there. Right. Uh, most of the time at a camp, you're gonna spend most of your days outside doing whatever you're doing, working outside, playing softball outside, basketball outside. Everything's outside in the open in a big, not in a little yard. I mean, a big, giant open place, man. You know what I mean? I'm glad to hear that because I did. We didn't know. I'm, you know, you watch these movies and you watch these movies on TV. I'm like, yeah. You know, and the, my- and, and, and the movie stars that go to these camps, they don't really talk about it. Martha Stewart never really told us what it's really like. You know what right. I mean? Uh, right. and not, there's just and the feds don't allow cameras in there, so you really can't. You don't see any footage of uh, of in in a especially a camp, but the feds right. are all keep it all locked up, secret. They don't want any. They don't let the press in there, man. You know, so it's right. it's there's not a lot of info out there on federal prison camps. So I'm doing my best to let you to tell the world. <laughs> you know, that's that's. I mean, you've been helpful to me and my family. I can't. You know, I you have. You want. You really have. Cause without these videos, like I don't know. I don't know nothing about that area of the country. I don't know. No, I didn't know nothing. I'm just like, listen, we go. Let's go get. Let's get some literature on it. Let's find out. Um, is that how difficult it's gonna be? And then the time, like. Are you going to jail for 18 months and a good time and the programs or different things you might have or or jobs? I learned all of that on your channel. Yeah, you know? 18 months, you're, you're going to get uh, you get 54 days for each year. But in your right. you, so you got three months coming. Uh, well, 54 times three, but let's call it three months. And you're going to get uh, you'll get two months halfway house. At least they might give you three. They're letting people go earlier. That's why these. That's why there's only like 87 inmates as opposed. That's why it's a little empty right now. So you're right. gonna get two or three months halfway house time, but you're you're not gonna be there a year. You know, you're gonna be in and out, and it's you're actually gonna enjoy yourself once you realize that you are able to enjoy yourself. I know you don't want to hear that. You got your family, your friends, and all that, and I'm not there right. to have fun. I'm there to do no. You will yeah, you will make friends. You can refuse to make friends all day, but you're going to make friends. I don't right. care. Everybody, everybody's. I'm not gonna. I don't want to make any friends in prison. What do you? You know, you're. It's gonna happen, man. Because these are guys just like you, you and me. These are your your working class American, average Joe prison. You know what I right. mean? Right. I'm glad to hear that. You know, I, that makes things a whole lot more optimistic. Cause my my wife doesn't know anything about jail. You know what I mean? And she was just yeah. like, and she watched all of them TV shows, prison break and all that. So she's yeah. like, See, me, 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 me and you could have lunch together. At, at We could have our own table. We could sit at the table and have lunch. I can reach across and grab your, and grab your milk. I, you know what I mean? If you, if you let me, but, and right. nobody's, nobody's gonna, there's the, 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 you know, the Aaron Brotherhood's not gonna be there, to, you know, to beat me up for it, you know, and, and you know, you know, the Crips ain't gonna grab you and go. No, we, we we are allowed to do that at a camp. We we don't have those rules or there's no politics like that. You know, right. I mean, there's there are for the TV rooms, but there's a black TV room. But you say, hey, Sean, there's a game on tonight, man. I'm gonna save you a chair. Everybody in the right. TV room said it's cool. I'll be in your TV room that night, and nobody's right. gonna trip. But I gotta be invited as a guest. But it's allowed. So My you know. Wife, it, my wife had a question she wanted me to ask you before she yeah. just went to How do I wash my clothes and detergent? Because we was looking on that commissary list and I see like how does that work? Like that's that's the that was her question, believe out of everything. Uh, okay, like, so you're gonna have a laundry machines, so like um four or five, you know my building had two hundred inmates and we had uh six washers and six dryers. You buy tide and you buy softener and you buy that on your commissary. They sell tide, but it's it's powder. Um, I don't know if they had the liquid. I think they also sold some kind of liquid lit stuff. But it, you're just going to use the machine like you like you normally would at home. Um, right. And or there's a laundry facility, and you take your clothes in it in this like mesh bag, and you give them the bag, and they throw it in a big giant machine with ten other bags. It spins around, and they'll wash your clothes there. Or if you got the money, 
you pay you pay like five bucks a, a week to the guy at the laundry and he'll take your clothes out in a special machine that they have at their facility he'll wash it he'll fold it he'll iron it he'll bring it back to you then there's guys that actually will come to your cubicle take your laundry twice a week go wash it in the machine that that's in the building and they'll fold it and iron it for you and they'll charge like five bucks a week so depending that you know if you got money or you don't money like how do you pay them like you got cash or, tunas or? man tunas man i'm gonna show you i always keep a bag of tuna you see this bag of tuna remember yeah. this this costs a dollar 45. um uh -huh. it ain't when you go to jail okay this is the money in jail soups uh these are only worth a quarter in a prison right. camp and these are this snacks. They feed these to the birds, man. They, they, these... right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because I don't know. I heard you yesterday. He was like, hey, you pay him this. Pay. I'm like, man, listen. You know, and I, I got some very valuable information because I was like, you know, you're going to go in there and worry about buying clothes. But I'm looking at this list. It's going to be more than $360. Yeah. Um, so the way you can also put money on their books. You can have your wife put money on the laundry guy's books. You know, and he, he'd do it that way. Or you can trade them meat. They, so they have car, carnitas is big. That's like four bucks for a bag of carnitas. They have mussels in a bag. They have uh, clams in a bag. They have oysters in a bag. They have mackerel in a bag, tuna in a bag, all kinds of meats on a bag. And and that's what everybody trades for. You know right. what I mean? That's that's your money. Right. I didn't know that. So when you were talking about $5, I'm like, man, I didn't know. <laughs> hey um yeah so you're gonna when you get there you're gonna want to buy it so they got a limit like uh you can only buy 48 packs of meat just assorted ones so limit you, you're only gonna be able to buy maybe 200 dollars worth of meat every every week uh, every month so right. you know and that's your spending money or your snack money you know you use it for snack right. people the tuna eventually does get eaten <laughs> Right. So, so I was looking at that that commissary sheet, and you know they got limits on things like you can only buy four a week, or some stuff like right, that. Right, 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 right. Uh, like they sell uh, Pepsi or Coca Cola, you can only get two twelve packs uh, at a time. So there, there's certain limits on things. Yeah. Wow, man, this is not the jail. This is not jail that I was thinking about. We got so ice. I there's ice machines, and you get co Coke in a can, and uh, you know, and then if you got some extra money, you can pour a little. Uh, Rum in your coke, but uh, <laughs> at the camp, <laughs> so I can work out. I can, uh, I can stay up all night. Basically, watch TV. I can go to the gym. I can have a job. I can have cokes. I can eat tuna. I can wear gym shoes. Uh, yeah, and, and man, it, 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 you know, there's lots of sports. There's, uh, you know, I don't know if you're in the softball, but it's really big in the camps. It's it's almost like that. It's um, huh? They have basketball. Oh yeah, all, yeah, indoor and outdoor. Your your, your camp had a gym. I saw a building that looks like a gym, but they also have outdoor basketball. But they have basketball tournaments. They have teams you join. You know. Wow. Yeah, wow. I was. Uh, I played softball a couple of games. Uh, we had an over fifty over fifty team. Right. <laughs> Anybody over fifty? <laughs> yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know if I wouldn't have came across your channel, I wouldn't have known none of this, none of it. And I, I, I think that you're doing a great service. Um, I'm going to advocate for your channel. And like I said, I'm a, certain things I'm going to do. Um, any questions do you have for me? Any more, any questions? Or Because I got a million for you. I don't think we have long enough in this damn show for all the questions like that. And they, and they come oh. to me periodically. Like, yeah. do they have all the channels on the TV? How does that work? Hey, does oh, great question. Yeah, you, you get cable. Um they don't have HBO, but you'll get A and E and FX and USA and all that. Yeah, they got regular cable channels, and then um, the uh, they have a they have their own movie channel. And uh, so at my facility, they they actually had a Netflix account, and they would run uh, Netflix movies on all the TV cables. And they do they have like three movies a week, uh, and then we had a movie night on Saturday nights. They turn this big chapel into a movie theater, and we every we all sit there and, on a big white screen TV, and we and, and they had good movies that just came out, movies that are only two months old. Um, yeah. Uh, so, quest, questions for you. So, um, do you uh, have you figured out? Uh, have you done a, a checklist of things that you uh, need to bring with you? Have you watched any of my videos on uh, on like ten things to know before you self surrender? 
Are you? I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, I probably won't start that process until Monday. I've been kind of watching my wife because yeah. it's up and down. It's like this morning it was real bad. Like yeah. right now she's gonna buy things to cook dinner. We'll right. see how they go. I said I was gonna give it a process, but and then she wants to have a conversation with my kids. So before I got into the technical stuff, I was just basically because I had a conversation with you about finances yesterday. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm on probation. Crazy. That's a whole nother yeah. Oh, and those are the kind of things like I have to kind of fix now rather than waiting to get out because I don't got but and let me ask you a question. I get out. And they say I have to go to the probation officer for three days. Within right. three days. Within three yeah, days. Within, within 72 hours, you need to report. Yeah. I need to report. So how does this work? Is it the same like pre-trial? Every time I want to go out of town, I got to go through the court and ask the judge if I can travel? How does no, that that's going to be your probation officer handles all that for you. At, at first, he's not going to, he's going to want you to stick around until he gets to know you. But uh, normally you can travel anywhere in the, in the state that you live in. And then if you want to go out of state, uh, they'll let you, depending on why you want to go, if it's to visit family. But the longer you're on probation, the longer leash they give you. So after about six months on probation is a norm, they're going to let you go. You want to go to New York for the weekend. They don't have a problem with it as long as you're doing good. And you never have to go to court. The only reason you would go to court on probation is if you come up with a dirty drug test or you violate, or like I told you, you go get a credit card and you didn't ask for, for permission, and they find they find out, hey, what's this? You got two credit cards you didn't even ask us about? Yo, yo, it's yo, it's five million dollars. Like Larry, I was telling you yesterday. So you know, back in my drug days, so I go get an eight ball off G money, right? But I get paid, and I'm an addict, and I ain't gonna go pay G money. So I'm gonna go to T boy. And I'm gonna go buy a sixteenth on him for fifty bucks, but I owe you know I owe G Money two hundred dollars. G Money knows T Boy. I didn't know this. They find out. He called me up, motherfucker. You owe me two hundred dollars. You outspending fifty? That's not you know. You know what I mean? It ain't. It ain't. You know they ain't happy. That's you know. Cool. So so G Money gonna violate me. <laughs> right. And you know, uh, this is for your audience. If you watch this video. If you get indicted, you're going to go to jail. The faster you get through the process of taking your plea and having your family accept your situation, the faster it's looking like, the faster you can go ahead and get in there. Like, I have been waiting to go to jail for two years. It has been annoying. Yeah. Your life is on hold. You cannot plan anything. If you want to travel, you got to go through this right. big hidden permission through the judge and explanation. And it's just been... Yeah, the life is on hold. Yeah, so, you can't you can't start nothing. You can't start a career. You can't start any plans future. And your wife, I bet you put your wife through hell. How mm -hmm. many times? How many times you wake up? Uh, how many times your wife get and get no night night sleep because of the, the stress of you on pretrial? <laughs> no, and 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 now it's now that we know things are starting to get a little better with the help of you in this channel. I'm able to like explain stuff to her more clearly, like. These are the visitation. You're gonna have to fill this paperwork out to come visit. Uh, um, this is how much money I'm gonna be able to spend. This is where I'm gonna be. Uh, these are the hours I'm gonna be able to call. The email thing. I gotta go back over all your stuff. Let's do another. Let's do another video. You know. Yeah, what I mean? yeah, I'm sure, sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can think of at least because she's if she was here she probably would stand right here it was like ask him this ask him this ask him this yeah you know? i'm gonna work with you through all this man we'll, we'll do we'll be, i'll prepare you for all this man we'll get, so i want you to go in there and when you get in there you, you know you, you'll know everything to do it's it, right. and, and you're good a, a lot of the guys i work with they get in there and they email me back the shot it's everything you said it was and I, you know what <laughs> I, I told you it's like i told you you're going to a you go into a, a summer camp of prisons. Look, it's not a country club, okay? It, right. it ain't a country club, but right. in a way, it's club fed, and there's a big difference, okay? Right, right, right. I'm, right. I'm not saying there's swimming pools and golf courses, nothing like that, right? But right. they have everything I've I've said they have. You're, right. you're going to be just just fine there. You're, you're going to be comfortable there. Believe it or not, you will you will be able to relax for the first time since pre-trial started. You can actually relax. Right. You're gonna. You're going to be able to. You're gonna sleep good. <laughs> you will.
school they got pool. I see they had pool. They had pool tables. Hey, they got band rooms, and uh, you know they got uh, PA mixers, microphones, and you can plug your MP3 in there, man. You can do rap, hip hop. You can do rock bands, whatever. They got music rooms. They got all that stuff. You'll hook okay. up with guys, and you you, you, you oh, know when it over this commissary thing with you because yeah. I don't know the best microphones to get and I don't know the best MP3 player and how am I going to put music on the MP3 player? So every TV room has these little uh, little uh, computer terminals that you're going to email home with but the terminals also have a music library. It costs about $2 a song and they have, a, they have about 10,000 songs on. they have everything you could think of but it comes out of your uh, the money that's on your account. It won't affect your commissary spending limit, but whatever money you have on your on your prison bank account, it's going to cost you two dollars a song. And you down you plug your MP3 player into the terminal, and you pick the song, and it downloads it into the MP3. And then every two weeks, you have to um, plug your MP3 in there, and you have to put your 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 password and your username in there and reapprove it. That's in case it gets stolen or lost. Nobody else can use it. So every two weeks, it has to be reactivated, if that makes any sense. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. And it also has to be charged. And all the TV rooms have little chargers, just like a cell phone charger. And so you'll see. You'll see what are the batteries for? The batteries for radios. So you got radios and you got MP3 players. Yeah, the radios, the, the, the MP3s have... You can you charge them like a cell phone, but the radios have to have batteries. And the radios pick up the the, the, the local radio stations. Yeah, they do AM and FM. The MP3 player has an FM uh, radio, but it doesn't have AM. Oh, so I ain't getting that radio, man. I just stick with the MP3 player. Yeah, uh, yeah, That's and the F FM frequency for the TV rooms. Some TV rooms you don't need a radio, a headphones to hear the TV. Some you do. It just depends if they turn it on or not. So there's some prisons, if you can't afford that $100 MP3 player, you're not going to be able to watch TV. But there's always used radios for sale. You can buy a used radio for like 10 bucks off, you know, like four tunas for a used radio. You got to supply them your own batteries. Um, so um, so what headphones, what was the best headphones in there to Oh, uh, man, they're all rip off, man. I mean, they'll sell you. <laughs> it'll say Sony, but you get it, man. It, it's like. They're they're it's five times the price of a normal set of headphones. You know, every prison's got they change. They'll have two or three brands. Uh, yeah. They're they're all pretty bad, man. Um, if you can afford, usually the most expensive one is going to be the best. <clears throat> but yeah, okay. you can buy earbuds are are like ten bucks, ten dollars right. eighty cents. It's the same ones I buy at the ninety nine cent only store. The exact same brand, and they were right. ten bucks for them. So, wow. wow. Oh, well, I don't know. They're telling me when I go that if I don't get there by a certain time that I have to go into, I might have to go into some sort of quarantine for 14 days because I'm opting out of taking that shot. Oh, so, here's the thing. Yeah, if you're not, you haven't, if you refuse to be vaccinated, you're right. going to be a quarantine inmate. <clears throat> you're not going to be allowed privileges to go to the gym or, uh, Maybe even a chow hall. <clears throat> you're gonna after you're gonna, basically gonna be um, uh, uh, in your you're gonna have to stay in a quarantine range. You're gonna yeah, man. You're gonna have to uh, make that choice. You're not gonna have any of those privileges if you, if you refuse that shot. Well, for how long? For two weeks. The whole time you're there, if you refuse the shot, the vaccination thing, yeah. Until they change their policy, um, yeah. You, you, you're gonna be sent to your room, you know. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I know a lot of people don't want to. They won't. They don't want to get that shot. Um, I ain't that shot. So we going That is gonna be. That's my biggest dilemma. Like I'm not getting the shot. So, you know, what well, I have to see. Like I don't. I, I mean, don't... It, normally you got to test negative twice, and at ten days apart, you got to have a negative test. Um, right. But when they get their batch, every prison, like every month, they're going to give them, uh, you know, fit, here's 50 batches of the shot for your new inmates. And if you refuse to get vaccinated, then you're going to be on quarantine status. And you're not going to have all, they might not let you in the gym to work out with people. They might, you know, I mean, you can't take classes. 
they don't want you sitting with the other inmates you know and they're, and they're that's probably going to change as all the states are opening up and the masks are coming off now but right now right now that's that's the policy right now it might change next month that's something you, you got to consider man i mean I, i'm i'm not going to tell you to get the shot or not get the shot I got the shot, and I didn't want to get the shot, but I got the shot. And so I might—I don't know. I gotta—I gotta think about it. I'm gonna talk to her about it. I might get the first one and don't get the second one. Get the first one, go in there and get my privileges, and that way I ain't got it. I heard that the second one is the one that jammed you up pretty bad. The guy yeah, that's I, the guy, one of the people that's in my case, he got the shots. The second one, he and he was in the hospital. I get his date pushed back. He had uh, blood clots in his brain. Uh, I've been hearing stuff like that. I yeah. got the Johnson and Johnson. It's a one-time shot. Yeah. Uh, if you could find that one, and I didn't have a problem with it. Um, yeah. You know, so well, I'll figure it out. I think I'm more opting towards Pfizer, Pfizer, though. That's the one I really hadn't heard anything. Right, yeah. right. But I don't know, man. Uh, let's do it again. I'm pretty sure I have a million more questions. Uh, okay. You know, um, and then call me when you get off here. Yeah, all right. I'll do that, man. Any last words uh, for the audience out there? Um pass it along i hope that the things that i'm telling you i went through help you in your journey um please fast um don't lie uh do not get a unless you plan on going to trial and fighting to the death do not get a paid lawyer you're wasting your family's money you're an idiot if you do that because you're gonna plead and if you prolong this process you're gonna pay for it at sentencing um I don't know. Like, try to avoid getting indicted is the it's probably the main thing. <laughs> but, if you, but if you do get indicted, you're going to jail. I don't know. I can't put it no other way. Yeah, yeah. How long you go to jail depends upon you and the work you put in, your letters, your community service, your plans, your you writing a letter, but you're speaking from the heart. So it's kind of good for you to write it down so you can remember it. If you go to court and you stand there with a letter, that's not considered as being sincere. Right. Uh, uh, trust me, like a lot of people, uh, you know, I got a lot of haters. So they was watching and they was like, we seen you crying. I was like, you ain't in this situation, no man. Did you not hear them say 50 to 61 months? Did you not? Hear them? <laughs> yeah, I'm crying. I want yeah, to I'm crying. You got a problem with a man crying today? In today's world, a man can't cry? <laughs> I wanted to holler. You know what I mean? But it all, it, it all worked out. Um, I'm going to a camp. And, um, man, Sean has helped me out. Um, donate to the channel. Subscribe. Send people. Um, you know, thanks, brother. I appreciate it. And I am coming back a bunch of more time. Plus, trust me. Because my wife's gonna make me. She got a thousand questions, you know. All she, right, you bring your wife on too, man. <laughs> I, am, I think I, the next one I'm gonna have her sitting right here. There you go. Have her questions out, and we'll we'll we'll, we'll cover them, man. <laughs> I appreciate it, brother. I appreciate it. All right, man. I'll call you. Think. All right, thanks. All right. Call.